new paint, new gloves. So here we are, we're ready to do our coating of red. A couple of little tricks that make life a little easier when you're doing detail work. If you have one of these big fatty brushes and you don't want to deal with it, it's okay to change the contour like so. So I'm just doing a chamfered trim, right? And that's going to minimize the amount of brush material I have for contacting my area. Now, this is good because when you're doing lots of surface area, you can take this contour and cover a whole bunch of material. But that doesn't necessarily give you um, the detail work to do these perimeters. So being incredibly lazy, uh, when you have a brush that's just much too large for everything you need to do, it's okay to cut it off so that you have your detail zone and you have your long zone. I think these cost a dollar, so don't get too hung up on those. And then if you just have these random solo containers and you want something more low profile, I usually just pierce it with the leather scissors, right? So we're just cutting straight through and then cut in a low circle. And that's going to allow us to access our paint without having to try and dip all the way to the bottom of that cup. So this is garbage. And this is where we're going to put our red. Let's see if I can open it. So what we've got here is, this is the chili red. And just a little bit, should be fine. Um, I have since cleaned all my brushes, and we're starting out with a fresh set of everything. And we're just going to start by doing our bright red perimeter. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ease my way into the edge, right? So as I start painting, I can float off this edge here, and that's fine, because there's nothing I can run into with the brush. But that's going to allow me to cut my line nice and clean by that emboss. And although we're worried about making it perfect. We have that tiny brush to chase in any edges and the emboss is going to help us a little bit with that design. And usually I found the red takes two coats. So the first coat you're going to see where it's a little thinner. The black tends to cover everything really well, like completely opaque, no issues. And the red, you'll find it's got thin spots for one reason or another. It's not because your brush is wet. It's just because the red is not completely opaque. And so it takes two to three coats to get it to look exactly the way you want. So the first coat, you're just trying to get some major coverage. And then the second coat, you're trying to make sure all of your lines are really clean. And the third one is usually just a, a light touch up. So we've got that, that section done. We've got the border. That's nice. And if you see thick spots, try and spread them out evenly so that you're not, um, you're not getting sections that dry really quickly and sections that take forever to dry um, because that'll, that'll slow down your entire process. So I always go back and I look for, if it's too streaky, just run the brush over it again and make sure that it's not streaky. Streaky! You can see here, oops, little close to my design. The nice part about that, I'm just going to take the time here. Grab my little spongy sponge. Squeeze out the water. And then just gently chase off that red where I didn't want it. Okay, better than new. So that's the nice part about doing your, your backer coat first, right? Your dark layer first, is you can come back and you can do touch up if necessary because that paint is already dry. So, there we go. And now, oh, I think I want some more red paint, just a little bit. Again, the leather is dry. It's very thirsty. And because we're doing multiple coats, it's always important to make sure 
that you get everything thoroughly coated. This is always a weird grip to try and do this um, channel here. You have to come in fairly carefully with your chip brush. It's really hard to do with the tiny brush just because you're always painting uphill. So I will always change the orientation of my armor so that gravity is working with me. And as I go to do these coating steps, you know, I'm getting close to that border, so I know with my fine detail brush I can get what I'm looking for. But with this, uh, this tight corner here, I want to start out in my trough, sort of use the contour to push the brush so I get a nice clean line. So really holding it so that gravity is working with you, and if your dominant hand has a directionality to it, you want to hold your part, your armor piece, so that it's comfortable for you to move your hand across where you're trying to brush, but you can still see what exactly you're trying to accomplish with that brush stroke. Okay. So then when you switch sides, you've got to make sure you know that your hand is still paint free and that you can switch your grip to then comfortably come in, right, and lay down that paint line and pull along the armor. So again, we want to have a nice strong red. I'm going through this whole thing, making sure there's a strong red everywhere that's um, easy to hit with this, this chip brush. We want to make sure everything's really popping because um, the detail brush will take forever to do anything that, uh, that we need. So we're going to put that there. We're done with the chip brush. Add a little more red now that we have our detail brush because that crane is going to suck up quite a bit. Okay. So here we go. Just touching down where the crane is. And it's okay if you decided you went too far with the black, how to incorporate the red where you want it, or whatever color you've chosen. If you realize that perhaps this detail should have been pushed further out, the emboss will tell you where that is, and you can feel it with the brush. But just take your time to make sure that every brush stroke you're doing is what you want when you have this tiny, tiny brush. So as we approach our patterns, we want to make sure that those lines are good, clean seams. Everything's matching what we're looking for. And that we're not getting huge patches that aren't drying. So once you see those lines get a little thicker or heavier, you can come back with the light brush and just gently touch it up. And just know that when you're painting this, there'll be a little bit of red, a little bit of black, and you'll go back and forth between each color until you're satisfied. And once you're satisfied, that's when we get to do the really fun part, which is riveting. It's like a whole lot of work, and then it's just done. So just like 10 minutes of riveting, and all of a sudden your armor seems very armory. Which is weird because armory is its own word. Every time I do this crane, it looks a little different. I'm trying to get its eye round is always tricky because I want its beak to be sharp and long, but I'll have to come back and use the black to really define that because you're painting on a curved surface. So if you've ever done like painting on a canvas, you know, gravity is working with you, but it's just a flat surface. And when you're painting with armor, you have all these curves, you have all these lines, you have all these textures, and you're just trying to make sure that you're matching all of the physical textures with the colors you've imagined. And 
it leads to this very strange process of trying to fight gravity, finding the right position, and really calmly doing your brush strokes. So, now we're going to do the other wing. You'll notice I always touch down with just like a fat glob in the center. I don't worry about it too much. But then as I get towards the edge, it's always trying to do a, a nice smooth stroke. So I'll touch down to the center mass of the wing to get a little more paint on my brush so I can push the edges to where I want. And it's really about just gently holding your piece doing your brush stroke so that the edges of the bristles are doing your detail work. You're not trying to get the center of the brush there, just the edge. And so these these tips can be a little a little tricky. Just take your time. Don't forget to breathe. I don't want all my students passing out mid-process because they're so focused on painting that uh, they forgot to breathe. So there we go, we've got a pretty good uh, rough outline of this. Now, at this point, you wanna take a look around and ask yourself, did I miss anywhere, right? Because these edges here, they sneak right up on you. You're like, oh, I totally forgot to paint this small itty bitty section. And then you're coming back with the red and you're coming back with the black and you're trying to get that line just right. So it's always good to do your first two coats in red and start hunting for spaces you may have missed. Just long, smooth, continuous stroke. Okay, like that. And if there's any wiggles or any, any wavering you're worried about, you can always chase it back with the other color. Now I'm switching my grip again, and you can see on this side, I actually went over my emboss with the black, so we've got to cut that line back in correctly. And that's going to push this red border forward here, like so. And we just want to make sure that we pull it in so it's a nice smooth line. There we go. So that's a pretty clean line. We're happy with that. Over here, tiny spot we missed. Boop. Give it a little bit of paint. Smooth it out. On this edge right here, again, we can do just a little bit. And you don't have to rush through this. If you don't think you can do it, just let it dry, and then come back when it's dry so you can really handle it properly and get the last of the paint you want. Um, I am going to try and fill this crack that I made in the leather from roasting it in front of the heater. So that way it looks like one smooth line. I like how this crane sort of looks like a vulture. I think when I come back with the black, I'll try and give it a little more of an elegant neck than the, the waddle that it has. But it's, it's always an interesting look when you go to paint these, these transfer patterns with the stippling how just the slightest brush stroke makes an elegant neck look like a little vulture neck. So. There we go. So we're going to call that good. It's close enough for what we need. Here's our final crane shape. And here's our borders. Still drying. And we're done.